Thank you, brother. My <clears throat> goodness, this is one of those, this message, this topic, and the uh, scope of it that you presented is one of those that uh, down through the years that I have listened to your teaching and the things that God has made known to you, every once in a while, one leaps out, one particular subject or topic leaps out and grabs me and uh, extends my perception of the truth uh, way beyond, <laughs> way beyond where I was, where I have been, what I've seen. And this is one of those that in, in, in my own uh, learning from the Lord and uh, the attention that I've given to the revelation of his will and his purpose, I've seen these things, but have not put them together in this manner, have not made these connections, and this is one of those topics that just, it permeates yeah. the scripture it, intentionally by God's will. Made me think of this statement here, uh, this conclusion or preliminary conclusion that the apostle draws here in Romans 11, oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments, That's his choice, his choosing, his judgments, see. And unfathomable his ways, the means by which he carries this out. We can't discover it ourselves, but he, he does reveal it to us. Yeah. This is what he's doing. He's revealing to us, demonstrated in Israel, his choice of them, and then worked out more fully, more completely, more perfectly in us, in Christ Jesus. As the gospel is expounded and the implications of that, of that gospel are made clear to us in the writings of the apostles and their associates, who has known the mind of the Lord, who became his counselor, who has first given to him that it might, pardon me, that it might be paid back to him, from him and through him and to him are all things. <laughs> There's another one of those threes. And of course, this, this is God's choice, of course. In his providence and his wisdom, his choosing and planning ahead of time, his execution of this, and then the results that come in those in whom he has executed these things. Yeah. Uh, another one of, or, or one of Jesus' sayings that is prominent in my mind that's connected to these things is what the Lord revealed about his being the good shepherd in John chapter 10. Yeah. See, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. I know my own, I am the good shepherd, I know my own, my own know me. Mm -hmm. Even as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. Mm -hmm. So this is how he's worked this out. This is how he's gathered us together. See? He came and declared who he was, lived it before us, mm -hmm. and then this was expounded in his chosen witnesses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's a key tag key statement there, key identification of those who uh, have preached and written these things for us, my chosen witnesses. So brethren, our believing these things, even, even as our, our brother expounded these things to us and delineated these things, laid them out for us, uh, it, it just drew my heart upward. And it challenged me about the largeness of these things to which we have been called. Congregational things are not big enough for this. A view of personal evangelism is not big enough for these things. It's not big enough. Our God has called us to himself. The, the, the judge of all the earth <laughs> has called us to himself. And he's working these things out in us, having chosen us in the beloved. As that text says there in Ephesians chapter 1, where the apostles laying this out for them. Yeah. And making application of these implications mm -hmm. of that in them. As, as God works these things in those who believe these things. These vast 
things that he's, that he's laid out from the foundation of the earth, from the foundation of the world. <laughs> so leave it, to, uh, leave it to men, religious. It's like the, 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 the Gentiles have done to the church, yeah. to the gospel, what the Jews did by arguing about what knots they could tie or not tie on the Sabbath day. Whether or not they could gather some grains and rub it between their hands and pop it in their mouth as they walked along on the Sabbath day. Whether or not a man could stretch forth his hand and be healed on the Sabbath day. Or a woman who's bent over could be raised up and strengthened on the Sabbath day. <laughs> See? Even so, the church has done this of God's choice. What's been revealed, what's been revealed here, specifically in, in these words here in Ephesians. It, it couldn't be laid out any more clearly. That God has chosen a people, his people. And those who are drawn to Christ, those who hear Jesus' voice and follow after him and give themselves to him are that people. They are that people. And we have. We're not the only ones, but we have. Mm -hmm. We have. And so this, this gives me great confidence. <laughs> great confidence in what God is working in us. And of course, to have, to have confidence in what God has called you to and what God is working in you will cause you to be very, very peculiar mm -hmm. in this generation. If you speak with confidence about the work of God and the things of God and the purpose of God, you will have a target on you by the religious community. The leaders will target you as someone odd and strange and possibly something wrong with your brain. And, and the people, many of the people will avoid you and not want to speak to you because... Uh, because of that very confidence, because they, they have no clue what that could mean. No clue at all. And, and, and don't understand that the scriptures. But we do, we do, see? <laughs> we do. So I want to exhort you to believe these things. By faith we understand, certainly. By faith we understand these things. We'll, he, he, will, he will enable us to put these things together, if you will, and see how he's working them in us so that it would confirm our hearts in the truth and establish us so that we can just continue to make progress. Continue to make progress in his truth and his will that he's working in us in Christ Jesus. Peter wrote about it there in, in, in his letters. John is writing about it in his, in his letters, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, especially 1st John. He's writing about this very thing. Confirming their confidence in God's choice of them so that, and, and helping them so that they can identify this in one another because of false teachers. By this we know. See? Yeah. Again and again and again he's saying it. And Peter's encouraging them in God's choice. The world is trying to beat them down. The world is causing great suffering. The unbelievers are and so forth. But Peter's encouraging them that God has chosen you. He has chosen, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a people of God's own possession. So all of the writers of scripture are confirming uh, this truth. The apostle Paul, of course, expounding it uh, more than the others as he does most things, as he does most things. And then the apostle John uh, sewing it up, if you will, <laughs> at the end, at the end there in the revelation of Christ Jesus. That those who are his are the called and chosen and faithful. And they will stand. And they will pass through this fire and come out. Yeah. This is us. This is us along with that great cloud of witnesses that surrounds us. This is us. So I encourage you, brethren. This is a very large, very large thing. Uh, uh, I, I hardly know what more to say about it at this point. I, I need to, to, in, uh, to uh, 
affirm, confirm, solidify uh, my, uh, my thinking about some of these things. This has is, this is really expanded my thinking. I'm grateful, grateful for it. Expanded my thinking about these things, going all the way back to the foundation here in Abraham again and the things that were said through Moses. So appreciate that so much, so very much, brother.